action. Okay, all right, here we are. What's up, guys? It's Supercar Blondie uh, from home. This is my kitchen. If you want anything to drink, just let me know. Uh, pop it in the comments section. I'll do my best to get something out for you. This is so, it's such a crazy time, isn't it? So weird. Um, my living room has just been set up as a studio. Welcome to the hangout. And basically we're all gonna just hang out from our living rooms. All right, the show's a bit different, but don't worry. This channel is known for getting the craziest and the coolest cars first. And that's still what we're gonna do. We have connections to all the major car companies around the world. So when something comes out, we're gonna get that footage and give it to you guys here on this show, The Hangout. I just wanna say, first of all, a massive warm welcome to all of you who are self-isolating and in quarantine. And also to those of you who are frontline workers, I appreciate you so, so much. My sister is a frontline worker, she's a nurse. So I have a little bit of an insight into what you're going through and I just wanna thank you so, so much for protecting us and making sure that we're all safe and we're gonna get through this, guys. Because I can't travel at the moment and I also can't bring a car into my living room, it's a little bit too small for that, unlike my friend who has his Senna in the middle of his living room in Texas, check this out. crazy. I can't do that. So because I can't bring the cars into my living room, I'm going to bring the cars to you guys. If you don't know, I live in Dubai and we are currently on 24 hour lockdown and we have been on lockdown for about three weeks now. So we can only leave the house once every three days for any essentials. So going shopping or going to a doctor's appointment. And when you leave the house, you also need a permit. You have to apply through the government. And while some people feel like the walls are closing in on them, I'm actually thankful for this because it means that we're all keeping safe, you know, and our, our curve is gonna flatten sooner than if things were open and up and running. So that's the situation currently in Dubai. It's not gonna last forever. Things are gonna change very soon as Dubai kind of starts to open up the country again. I just wanna focus on the positives what we do have at the moment. That's not the same for everyone. For me, it's my health, I'm healthy again. I had bronchitis for a little while, now I'm back to good health. The other thing is I get to spend way more time with my family than I ever used to, so I'm really appreciating that. And thirdly, while other people around the world have been boasting about all of the new skills that they've been able to learn, like guitar or like online doctorates and all of this, for me personally, I have been doing absolutely nothing for six weeks. It sounds ridiculous, but I just want to, those of you who have also been taking this time just to chill a little bit more than usual, not to feel bad about it. This is probably never going to happen again in our lifetime. So to be able to take this opportunity just to chill out a little bit, reflect on everything that's happened and kind of refocus is absolutely fine as well. So don't feel bad if you haven't picked up a million new skills over the last few weeks. Here are the main headlines of today's show. In car news, Rolls Royce has come up with an awesome way to keep you guys busy during isolation. In trending, we have got footage of a guy driving around 380 kilometers an hour. And for today's uh, video call, we're gonna be crossing to Italy to speak to the CEO of Lamborghini, Stefano Dominicali. You do not wanna miss that. All right, let's get straight to it. All right, in car news, you guys, look all pro and stuff with notes. All right, get ready for this. There's an update on the Tesla Cybertruck. That's the car that I bought uh, and hopefully will still get delivered within two years or so. Let's see. But there has been an update from Elon Musk as to what changes has happened since they revealed the prototype. Okay. The first thing he indicated was that the Cybertruck would float. In a tweet, he was responding to a guy who said, look mate, he didn't say look mate, but we're going with that. Look mate, I do a lot of hunting and fishing. So can this truck actually go through streams like big bodies of water? What's the deal? And he's like, um, it's gonna be able to float for a while. That was his quote. No idea what that means. The other thing that he tweeted was that the car is gonna be 3% smaller 
than the original prototype that we saw. And also the center line would be more levels. So if you look at this, we've got an example of the car on the left, that was the original prototype. And then someone else has mocked up a new version of the Cybertruck on the right. Now you might not be able to see very well what the difference is here between them, but you can slightly see that the right version now doesn't lean forward quite as much as the original prototype. That's pretty much all I can see. Second thing in car news, if you are bored out of your brains and trying to entertain the kids, or if you're looking for something to entertain yourself, Rolls Royce has come forward to say, kids, can now compete to design the Rolls Royce of the future. Now, what is super cool about this is you can submit your design to the Rolls Royce design team. They're gonna be looking at all your designs and they're gonna choose a winner. Now, the only thing that you need to know before you put your designs in, because I know all of you are grabbing the closest piece of paper and scribbling something down, you cannot be an adult, okay? You have to be 16 years or younger, but that doesn't mean you can't help out your kids, you know, on the side, just kind of design their Rolls Royce of the future. So you can enter as many times as you want. You know what you get if you're the winner? They're gonna render your car. So you're gonna see what your Rolls Royce would look like in a full render. That is pretty cool. Runners up are gonna get a signed letter from the CEO of Rolls Royce. That's pretty cool. You can frame that one, hang it on your wall. And if you're in the UK, get this, I reckon this is the best prize. You and your mate will be chauffeured to school in a Rolls Royce. So when you've got your first day of school back, you are gonna rock up to school in a Rolls Royce. That's pretty sweet. All right, third up in car news, the MC20, the Maserati. Now the release date for this has been pushed back. That's all right, we know these things have to happen at the moment. What we were expecting was to see the new MC20 reveal in May. So just in a couple of weeks from now, that's been pushed back now till September. If you haven't heard much about the MC20, let me just run through a couple of things here with you now. This is an exciting car because the Maserati is developing a mid-engine sports car. For a long time, we've seen Maseratis that are more Grand Tourers. You've got the engine in the front of the car. Now we're gonna see a mid-engine sports car. So because the engine has moved from front to behind the back seats, it means that the design is gonna be completely different. Take a look at this. We've only been able to see pictures so far of this car in its camouflage. Hopefully by September, we're gonna see those images of the full reveal. Now, this isn't the first time that Maserati has developed a mid-engined sports car or supercar. We have the MC12. This is meant to be like the spiritual successor to the MC12, but the major, major difference here, you guys, is that Maserati is no longer getting their engines from Ferrari. So while the MC12 was kind of based off the Ferrari Enzo, the MC20 is gonna be 100% Maserati. So Maserati developed engine. We don't know full details yet exactly how much horsepower it will have and what it's going to be, but it's widely believed it's going to be a V6 and have some kind of hybrid capabilities. And it's gonna go for around $160,000 a starter. Moving on guys into trending news. So what's everyone watching around the world? Especially in these times, we have way more time to be kind of looking at viral videos. A guy in Germany has taken his LaFerrari out onto an autobahn while it's kind of relatively quiet and clocked up a top speed of 372 kilometers an hour. That is madness. Okay, check this out. I'm watching it with you guys. What? 350, 354, 55, oh my, oh my God. This is madness. What? So, <laughs> the, the, he's just gone past the official top speed of the LaFerrari, which is 350 kilometers an hour, as he makes his way up to 372 kilometers an hour. Now you guys, this may not seem very fast, but I, the fastest I ever went was 260 and it feels like a completely different league. It's 372, there he goes, he hit it. He hit it and he's going back down again now. That's mad. 
was. To, as you can see, the highway isn't very busy at all. There are a couple of cars going past here and there. Uh, officially, you can do this in Germany. In some stretches of the Autobahn, it is legal to drive as fast as you want. Not recommended, obviously, because that can be super, super dangerous. Um, but there you go. That's what everyone's watching at the moment. All right, next up on trending, what is going viral on TikTok? What's everyone doing? The challenges? I don't know. So Nick's going to bring it in and, sh oh God, he's got a broom. What we have is a normal broom, okay. This is called the Broom Challenge. It's got 1.5 billion views on TikTok. 1.5 billion views? And, okay. Uh, what we have here is DJ Khaled uh, doing this challenge. Okay. okay. DJ Khaled. Saying some theory in the earth of the gravity theory that uh, I'm saying it's a theory. And if it's a theory, I want to know if it's a real theory because if it's a real theory. I don't see he's doing anything. He's talking a lot. Theory because it's a real theory. And I ain't trying to understand. Trying to, it's basically this is a scientific theory. Is he actually going to do something? Oh, standing on, yeah, 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 yeah. Whether you can make it stand on end, yeah. Okay. You know what the secret is to this? Having a really old broom splays further. Yeah? Okay. Is it a theory or it's possible? What's the theory meant to be? Let's see here. God, have we really become this bored at home? This is tragic, isn't it? Okay, so the theory is if you talk and you stand around it and you talk about the theory for long enough, then it's going to work, just like DJ Khaled did. So there's a theory to this, yeah? There's a theory that it might work, it might not work, but this is pretty much what you have to do to be able to get it to stand on its own. Nope, not going to work. Okay. Hey, 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 hey! Woo! Oh my God, I never knew I'd get something so excited <laughs> about it. I didn't know it was actually going to work. There you go. Wow. We learn new things every day. Isolation tricks. All right, guys. So go check, go try that at home. Um, that's what's going viral on TikTok at the moment. I'm on TikTok. I just joined. You can join me there as well if you'd like at Supercar Blondie. Check it out. I'm going to be doing more TikToks. This is the cool bit. I love speaking to people. I don't get to see too many new people these days. So we're going to cross now to Italy to the CEO of Lamborghini, Stefano Dominicali. Here we go, Stefano. Hello, Alexandra. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. It's nice to see you. Well, where are you now, Alexandra? I'm in Dubai. Where are you? I'm in, in, in the Dolomites where I have a house. So the place is great. Uh, unfortunately, we are lo all lo locked in in the house with the family, but uh, yeah. you know, it's... At it's least you've got your family. Good. And your family are all well? Yes, family as well, but you know, it's strange in a real situation, you know, but that's, that's the way it is, so we cannot change it. Have you had to be a teacher yourself? Have you been pulling your hair out? It's not easy, I tell you. <laughs> To, to, to be a teacher, knowing the, the teenager, how difficult they are, it's a massive task. If I had to go back and do year five maths, I don't reckon I could pass it. Ha, me neither. <laughs> I cannot say loudly, but I think so. Let me share something with you, Stefano. Here, yeah, yeah. take a look at this. Is this what you look like before joining me today on the, on the call? The one on the <laughs> left. <laughs> look, 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 that is true. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. super cool. First of all, yes. thank you so much for coming on the show. It's so awesome to have thank you. You. Uh, you know, a lot of us are interested in what's happening with the car world uh, in the last few weeks as, you know, coronavirus has kind of taken over the world and particularly in Italy that really bore the brunt of the coronavirus for some weeks before everyone else started experiencing yeah. uh, what was yeah. going on. So I um, wanted to talk to you about your experience with Lamborghini, what Lamborghini has been doing and what the future holds. For sure, as soon as we discovered the situation was getting more and more difficult, we took the very difficult decision to close the factory. So that was the first thing because we wanted to protect the people of the company. We have been always very, very close to our 
dimension in terms of social responsibility. And because we had other competence that could be used for the other reason, we said, why we don't turn, for example, the saddlery that is closed or was closed to make a protection a chirurgical mask for the hospital in Bologna, for example, that were and are still in a very dramatic situation. Why we don't use our 3D printing to, pro to prepare you know, the, 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 the mask uh, in order to give to them? And that's why we decided to go ahead with this kind of production. Just a sign of uh, being a part of this uh, unfortunate situation, giving our little contribution, as a lot of companies are doing, to the society and to our world, because we are all connected. We are all in the same uh, unfortunate situation. So that was really the thinking behind. Stefano, just talk to us about how difficult it is to convert a factory that usually manufactures supercars and is now manufacturing something completely different. How do you do that? Well, of course, ahead uh, in the saddlery, we had the competence of, of women and men able to manage a different kind of uh, materials. We had to make sure that the material were absolutely uh, certified. So we had a, a relationship with the University of Bologna, making sure that the certification would have done with the highest standard. So when you are making now uh, breathing apparatuses and uh, the face protection uh, shields, do you use materials that you're already using in cars for those products? No, materials are different uh, at all. The, the, the tissue that we are using, for example, for the chirurgical mask is a material with a uh, clear specification uh, that uh, as to, we had to, 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 to buy, we had to take from the market, and then we were using all the materials where needed to be certified for that use. So the technology was there, the material was totally different. So what you're saying is everything that you've been producing is purely CSR. You guys don't produce it and then sell it off to hospitals. You are purely producing and donating it all. Absolutely, yes, 100%. What about your staff? Are you able to still use most of your staff to be able to um, be in the factories producing this new stuff? Or did yes, you have yes, to... Yes, they are all, all done by our staff. Wow. So all the people that are, are working on, that, on this project are uh, our employees. There was such an incredible responsiveness in terms of positivity to be able to be part of this project. It was really fantastic. Mm. So we are really looking forward to restart uh, our work. Uh, we are waiting for the Italian government to... to give the signal that we can move ahead, we should be able to restart, com let's say, from the May the 4th. Are you just going to go full back to 100% production? Or are you going to slowly start increasing that uh, while you can maintain social distancing? How is that going to work? Well, what I can guarantee is that in terms of production, we're going to be ready for a full restart. If the logistics chain is there with the materials and so on, because that's the most important critical parts also, we need to make sure that, uh, and we are in contact daily with the, our suppliers, that because the flow of material has to come. If it's not coming, we cannot produce. So it's quite a long chain. Uh, tier one supplier means that the one that we have a direct relationship where there are more than 2,800. Okay. If you go to tier two, tier three, four, we are talking about uh, thousands of, of suppliers. So we need to see if everything is there with the right quantity, with the right moment we can. Uh, so it's quite complex, not, uh, you know, deciding tonight, uh, starting back tomorrow. But in any case, internally, in terms of production, we're going to be ready to, to start again immediately because the good things that I can say is that so far, you know, our uh, order uh, backlog is still very, very solid. Our customers have, have understood the situation. They yeah. have to wait a little bit longer on what was the plan, but that's a fortunate situation. The demand for cars in the market, you know, sales numbers have kind of plunged in March across Europe and it's expected to yeah. be similar in April. Um, so even, even worse, because April there's yeah. no production. March, there was a little bit of change of logistic uh, uh, moving around, but up April for the world of manufacturing, of the world automotive is would be even worse. What would you like to see, you know, regulators or the country do to try and spur on the, the sales of cars? Um, you know, there have been a few different measures taken after the financial crisis in 2009, um, you know, for, like trading in uh, pretty much worthless cars and they get some kind of cash back for that to be able to buy up and, and buy a new car. Is there something that you would like to see the government put into place? Let's divide two, two things. One is the, the super sport car that is a niche 
yeah. that is a different situation because of course uh, if you compare the crisis of 2008 here we are not talking about a crisis of a system of the banking system it's a crisis of liquidity it's a crisis of emotion at the beginning i right. think at the beginning would be you need to go back to the mood of buying these kind of goods mm. and i i think that as soon as the mood will be back the the the, the market of, of the luxury will be back up in a, in a quicker time okay. different is the, the is the segment of the let me put it this way the, the normal cars yeah. because that's something that will have a, a different situation of course uh, the most affected people would be the let's say the normal people that have uh, is, the, is uh, they are not working since many many weeks yeah. so we need to make sure that the government is is really pushing for the restart of the system so it would be uh, fundamental otherwise you know people will start to to spend money at the beginning with the things that they need that is more necessary. On the other hand, I see a potential because at the, uh, mainly, as I said, in the short term, in the next short, well, in the next six to 10 or one year time, yeah. people need to travel alone or wants to keep a social distance. So what is the best, what is better than a car to do that? Is there anything else like you'd like to add to uh, the conversation when it comes to looking at the car market in future? There are lots of people watching right now. Some of them are uncertain about uh, going forward. So I think that we need to stay positive, knowing that we have to overcome a quite tough time. The lesson learned that we don't have to miss is uh, in this moment, we have understood one thing. We cannot live alone. We are in such a global world that if we believe that everyone can do its own things, and uh, without being affecting uh, the other or without being affected, forget it. This is a clear message. Everyone at the beginning, when the, we saw uh, the one situation in China, was saying, oh, you know, we are the, it's Just so far to... away. Yeah. <laughs> Just forget it. And this is a lesson learned where we need to bring in, in new protocols, in new procedures, in new way of working better together. Yeah, and just be uh, positive about the circumstances that we, we are in, in that we're seeing more of our family members, perhaps perhaps more than we'd oh, like to be, um, <laughs> and our kids. Well, well, used. I mean, I never been, I, I, ne I never stay at home for so many days in my life, so that, that's another way of seeing the things, that's good. Exactly, exactly. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Stefano. It's been so nice to see you. The only faces I've seen for the past six weeks have been my husband and my yes. mum and dad on Skype, and that's it. So it's nice to see a fresh face. That's great. Thank you. The same for me, Alexander. So thank, thank you, you for so your much. time. I say hello to everyone that is following your beautiful show, fantastic show. And uh, let's hope that together we're going to relaunch, you know, this kind of spirit also together with your positivity, with your information channel, with uh, everything that you're doing in our industry is very, very important. Thank you very much. I can't wait much. to see uh, you get straight back to it and please give us any updates that you have in the next few weeks and we're going to be following it we'll, very closely. Thanks, we'll Stefano. Thanks for Thank joining us. Thank you. That was awesome. Ah, got to see a new face, fresh face. Thank you so, so much to Stefano for joining us here on The Hangout. Now, guys, every week we're going to be having someone on the show via video call. So if you have any ideas who you would like to hear from or see on the show, just pop those names in the comment section below this video and we'll try and get as many of those people on the show as possible. That's pretty much it for the Hangout. We're going to leave you on this note. The company behind the London Metro has announced that they're likely to go bankrupt by the end of the month if they don't get government funding. But don't worry about that. Throw that news out the window because in positive news, we can now take our cars down to the petrol station and not only get them to fill up our tank for free, but they will pay you to fill up your car tank. So don't worry about public transportation. Why? Because the oil price for the first time ever has fallen below zero dollars. They are literally having to pay people to take the oil out of their hands. This is crazy. Never, ever, ever happened before. That's it. That's the Hangout. I hope you enjoyed all of the different car news coming in from around the world. Thanks for hanging out with me in my living room and my kitchen. We're back to doing absolutely nothing. All right, guys, enjoy, and we'll see you on the next show. Love you. Till next time. By the way, I forgot something. If you haven't yet seen my TV show, it's called Car Cruise with Supercar Blondie. You can now watch it absolutely free. You just need to download the Insight TV app.
You'll get a 30-day free trial and you can watch all six episodes. All right, go binge it. Let me know what you think. Bye.